Next, I'm welcoming Shana Glickfield, who is, of course, going to be on the bar. They're, you're going to sit? I want a little dance. All right. Shana is, uh, I don't know, she does everything in this community. She's done so much, and she never misses on anything, so I'm not sure how this talk is going to happen. But she is going to talk about that. She started uh, one of the founders of the Beekeeper Group. She was one of the original sort of social media rock star consultants, gurus, whatever. And uh, she's going to talk about suffering from fear of missing out. Shana Glickfield. I realize you don't have a mic. Ah. Thank you. All right, here we go. Do you know me? I want to see a show of hands. I use this picture on purpose, so you might recognize me. Um, I'm not just doing this to be egotistical. The reason that you know me is because I have what's called FOMO. FOMO stands for fear of missing out. It's a syndrome. It's a rare but serious social disorder. It's very uncomfortable. Something is going on, and I'm missing out on it. Um, I have a motto I learned a long time ago. You can always retake a class, but you can't relive a party. Uh, this is my mom. A long time ago, she said, why do you always do this to yourself? Back when I was in high school, I had to use a landline phone to gather information about all the things that were going on and decide where I was going to go for my plans. Symptoms include information gathering, as I mentioned, constantly overbooking. We have a Superman syndrome. We think we can get it all done no matter how many times our plans fail. We have stress, we have exhaustion, and above all, we have hangovers. Uh, if you know Miha, he was actually my diagnoser. <laughs> I went on a trip to Denver, Boulder, uh, to check out the scene out there, and I wanted to do everything and meet everyone, and he was the one who said, you, my friend, suffer from FOMO. Uh, social media really took me to stage three FOMO, uh, the next level. I now have blogs, Twitter, Facebook, podcasts. I have access to your Google calendars. There is something always going on, and it's freaking me out. That's my Google calendar. Uh, um, FOMO, food and drinks. I have restaurant FOMO. I want to try every new restaurant. I started a blog about this, DC Concierge, about going out. And people are like, can you get me into this restaurant? I'm like, I don't have any relationships because I try every different restaurant. I have people FOMO. I have to network. That's how I know all my people. That's not actually my calendar, for the record. Uh, my Bible is a book called Never Eat Alone, and I live by it. And the worst thing you can say to me is, do you know so-and-so and me not know them? I have tech FOMO. I don't know if you can read this chat. This is when my boyfriend Jimmy said, I just got uploaded, um, upgraded to the new Facebook messages. Did I? No, it pops up if you do. I must have, I want, I have FOMO. He said, I'm special, you're not. <laughs> FOMO scheduling, first rule of FOMO, never reschedule on someone with FOMO. Second rule of FOMO, never reschedule on someone with FOMO. It can set off a domino effect of all of our plans. FOMO is incredibly expensive. We go to a lot of restaurants. We have big bar tabs. We like entertaining. We celebrate a lot. We have to send apology gifts when we can't make it because we overcommit. And we need a lot of clothes and accessories because of Facebook. We have our own language. I don't have time to communicate. Jeff Livingston calls this Shana speak. But I say things like totes, presh, ox, hilaire, perfs. Perfs is my favorite because I can reply in a text, in an email, or anything. Meet me here, I say perfs. I have a lot of likes. I love holiday season. We can go out and mingle. It's socially acceptable. Texting, it's quick. Red Bull mixes well with or without vodka. Foursquare, I'm finally being awarded for my FOMO with points and specials when the restaurants give them. FOMO dislikes private events unless I'm on the list. Power outages, I feel disconnected. The gym, it's useless. Uh, major holidays, because there's too much. Oh, this is the FOMO widow, Jimmy, thank you. It takes a very special person to be with someone with FOMO. <laughs> and you would say, why don't I just date someone else with FOMO? FOMO people actually repel each other. <laughs> it's like, like can't attract like. This is the FOMO toolkit. I actually own this bag, but in purple. Uh, you need a very large bag, although the rule is you're never supposed to carry a purse that's bigger than your head. I totally deny that. I like to fit everything I can in my purse because I am a girl on the go. I need a lot of technology. I have my iPhone, always. Um, I have my MiFi. That is a mobile hotspot. I can let up to five people on my mobile hotspot. I make a lot of friends at conferences. And finally, I have the iPad. I don't even like my iPad, but I need it because I have FOMO. 
My other necessities, milk. Milk is a standard girl thing. Do anyone, does anyone know it? Money, ID, lipstick, keys. I've added a silent P for phone. We need sunglasses, reading materials. Um, the irony of FOMO, where is everyone? Am I missing out? You can't be in the moment because you're always seeing if there's something else going on. So that's a photo of me at Cafe Du Monde in New Orleans and I'm seeing where other people are in DC. There's me in Montreal, I'm checking my phone. FOMO sufferers unite. We have a Facebook page, honestly we do. Um, we have some other FOMO sufferers. I thought they'd be here. Cheeky Geeky is one. Philippa Hughes from Pink Line Project. I'm currently exploring whether this is nurture versus nature and I hope that you'll join me on my FOMO adventures. Uh, I'll be up at the bar. <laughs>